Have you ever wandered into the ADC main subreddit? No? Good. Spare your mental health, because the complaints will not stop flowing. And that's not just on one single community within a single platform, it seems like over the years ADC players in general have built a particular reputation of complaining about how their role sucks or is mostly useless and without agency in the game. But are they wrong though? Well, yes and. ADC could be strong as hell in the meta, or it could be weak and replaced by Ziggs and Vega or whatever, but the reality is, it's a really frustrating role to play regardless of how objectively strong it is, and the people who main it seem to have their sanity eroded by playing solo queue. I want to dissect exactly why that is. Before we go in depth, we need to define what an ADC is. Attack damage cope, I mean carry. It implies that you have a physical damage champion that brings in a lot of damage for the team. So is Yone an ADC? Master E? Viego? Is Riven an ADC because she certainly has the damage? Or is ADC whatever champion you bring bot lane along with your support? In which case... Is Thumb Kench an ADC? No. Here we'll be talking about Marksman, the class of champion that deals damage primarily through ranged auto attacks and mostly physical damage abilities that enhance or complement their autos. So whenever I mention ADC, it's really about Marksman. Specifically, I want to try and understand why this class always seems to be in this limbo of being both the most consistently meta class in the game, while also feeling like it's permanently useless and impossible to play in solo queue. I think the first thing we need to acknowledge about this class is the obvious bit, that it basically lives or dies based on external factors. Assuming that every player in the lobby has the same or similar level of skill, the agency of the ADC player is pretty limited. The champion is a squishy ranged character, usually without self peel and with limited mobility. If they do have decent mobility, like Lucian, Ezreal and Vayne do, they sacrifice something else, like range, consistency or just raw DPS. But I digress. Being a vulnerable squishy, the ADC relies on their team to provide either hard engage and frontline, or at least some peel to keep enemy carries and divers away from them. This means that as a class, a marksman is dependent on their teammates to be able to accomplish their role. They need to be alive to deal damage, and they need help from other people to stay alive. That is where a lot of the frustration of the role comes from. Not being able to do stuff by themselves and relying on people who may or may not be on the same page as them to do what other classes can usually accomplish alone. That's why you don't see Vega or Seraphine in pro play replacing Aphelios or Varus, because those players not only have much better mechanics than the average solo queue player, but their team also knows how to play around them to allow those mechanics to matter. It's not enough to have perfect kiting mechanics, perfect spacing, perfect positioning and low ping when the enemy Mausaha can just flash out you and outplay you for 2.5 seconds. And since ADC is often the main source of sustained damage in teamfights, champions like him, Malphite, Ramus and Camille have very clear targets from the get-go. So you need to master all of those mechanics and get a team that plays around you, otherwise the marksman class cannot be a real carry in teamfights or skirmishes. That's where this video's sponsor comes in. Because if you want to learn an ingrateful, extremely hard solo queue role, you might as well get a coach to help you through it. Tapping.gg is a website where you can hire a hand-verified high elo player to either guide you through a game as you play it, or in my opinion the better option, get them to review a game replay with you and point out where you messed up your positioning, when you weren't looking at the map when you really should, and to just bring attention to all your mistakes like an Asian parent reviewing your physics homework. But they are pretty friendly, it's not like you'd be paying $350 to get yelled at because you tried kiting the Nasus in a side lane. So go to the link in the description and get yourself a man to tell you everything you did wrong with a 50% discount on your first order. The keyword is agency. As an ADC, there's only so much you can do. It's the same for every class of champion, each one has their limits and weaknesses. It just so happens that the ADC is specifically limited by being terrible at dueling most other classes and by what their team has to offer and how they play around them with engage and peel, something that in solo queue is beyond their control. In the early game, it's the supports. What determines the winning bot lane early on is often the support matchup more so than the ADCs themselves, assuming similar skill levels. Jungle ganks can also play a big role as a level 3 or 4 ADC can't do much to get a Zac or Rek'Sai off of them by themselves. And of course, when they get 4 man dove every 2 minutes in lane and their enemy ADC gets fed, it's suddenly all their fault and they should have just dodged the Lissandra ult. Jeez, no wonder the subreddit is an asylum. The second big problem that ADC players face is atomization. Most marksmen get their damage from gold more so than levels, meaning that they live or die by their items. Being behind the enemy ADC in gold is a complete losing situation, because if you can't win against them, you can only try to cut your losses. There's not much mechanical outplay an ADC can do to overcome a gold deficit against another ADC due to the way their damage is mostly point and click. Put an engaged support onto the mix and you can't even farm under your turret in peace, making the bot lane snowball extremely hard. The way that the items get changed patch by patch also affects how effective marksmen are as a class. If Infinity Edge is weak and inefficient, 
crit ADCs fall out of flavor. Now that it buffs your crit rate by 50%, crit ADCs are back in the meta, with more armor penetration on Lord Dominic's and Mortal Reminder as well. There's also an Avaru with an extra 5 AD, it's doing its best. One nerf to those might be just enough to get Jinx out of Hestia and replace her with something like Lethality Misfortune or a bot lane mage. It's a volatile class. It can be pretty stressful for an ADC player to want to play their main, but it just so happens that their items make them and most ADCs similar to them pretty much a handicap at that given patch. In fact, I think this is the first time since I started playing League that I look at the ADC tier list on u.gg and the top 5 champions on the bot lane role are mostly marksmen. That is not a very common occurrence in my experience. This is in part thanks to those item buffs, and in part thanks to some Seraphine and Ziggs nerfs to get them out of those crazy win rates. I'll just be upfront about it and admit I don't know what happened to Karthus, he doesn't even show up on the tier list anymore, but I recall him being so strong in bot lane and he only got some minor buffs since then. Might have been the season 14 items, if you know something about it please tell me in the comments. And finally there's our good old friend Damage Creep, the third reason why ADC can feel so ass to play. Think about a champion like Ash. she's got slows on her auto attacks and a respectable stun on her ult even if it's used in close range. So why does she feel so vulnerable? It's because most champions that she'll be playing against have ways to threaten her even through her utility. Slows don't affect blinks or most dashes, so a diver or assassin can just close the gap regardless and then she's screwed. As for a mage, they'll be significantly affected by the slow, but they have the range to threaten Ash even outside of her own auto range. So if she decides to commit to a fight, she has to dodge the enemy skill shots perfectly while auto attacking just to have a chance. That's one example of a more traditional ADC with autos, good DPS and above average utility. Other ADCs are either more vulnerable, like Twitch or Cogmore, or have less range and worse neutral game to play with, like Vayne or Kai'Sa, who basically must commit if they want to deal real damage beyond the laning phase. But the real kicker is the burst that they have to deal with. Most marksmen are based around sustained damage, which means it can take a while to ramp up. Divers and assassins have most, if not all, that damage up front, so they can just unload their kit in less than a second before the ADC can get 3 autos off and then they're dead, with no time to retaliate. And after the durability patch in 12.10, holy shit that was a while ago, damage has slowly been ramping up again, basically undoing that whole everyone is 10% tankier idea. Season 14, especially early on, has been pretty heavy handed on the burst as well, that's why ADC needed all the buffs they got so far just to compete. Even now, if you manage to get to the mid game as an ADC and get your core items, which is easier said than done, you're constantly in danger of being exploded by another class with even items, or sometimes even when they are significantly behind you if you misposition. And so with all this, you get the current state of the average ADC main. As for how to fix this problem, honestly, I have no idea. The identity of most ADCs is to have a glass cannon with sustained DPS, and you can't really make it feel nice to play in solo queue without it being either very overpowered or changing its identity and appeal entirely. I think that for now, we just kinda have to roll with it. If you main ADC or play it often, let me know in the comments. What would you do to make ADC more bearable to play? Consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers!